Today we're doing a fist from the sea. Very distinctive taste. The moule marinière in France, mussel marinière or mussel cellar style. And very simple, the classic dish you have in bistro in France. Those mussels are very clean as you see. I've washed them just recently, rubbed them one against the other, get any incrustation out. And I have a bunch of mussels here which as you see are open. Are open mussels good or bad? Not Necessarily what you have to do to start with, bang one against the other and see if they close. If those obviously are not closing, you can also touch the little muscle inside. If they don't touch, if they don't close, they are dead, you know. If they are still alive, they will close. They don't seem to have one, oh this one just closed. So this is very important because you can also rely of course on your nose and smell them. You will have a very strong smell and if there is bad smell, just throw it out. In any case, be sure to remove the beard, you know, those long things that you have here, and uh, rub them one against the other in a lot of water, and we put them directly in there with some white wine, the classic dish, a dry, fruity white wine. And with that, we are going to put some garlic. We have scallion. We have garlic, we have fennel, and we have onion. So we'll start putting a bit of chopped onion. Those are all very earthy type of thing. We use also to put, you can put a little bit of olive oil in it, but it makes it richer. You can leave it just straight, as I'm going to do here. This gives you a lot of green. All of that are from the onion family. You put those right in there. Right here, give you a lot of color. Well, and we add a little bit of fennel to this here, the fennel bulb there. You know, about that amount, it gives you that type of licorice taste, you know, which goes so well with product from the sea. You know? And it's not cooked very long, so it still have a bit of crunchiness. Watch out, sometimes those fennel bulbs can be a bit tough, you know. So test it first. You can use the rest to make a salad. You know, a salad with it, it goes well. Then, of course, garlic in it. I can just crush garlic. And the crushed garlic, you can add it directly to your mussel. As they cook, you know, you want to toss them around with a towel like this. You know, to bring, to bring the open one on top. You can even keep the lid like that and use your thumb with the lid to toss them this way. You know, that's a good way of doing it. About seven, eight minutes of cooking, and they're going to look just like those are. You know, open as you can see here. And what we want to do, the classic way, you know, is to serve them. You see, they render a lot of liquid. And in family, you may have the muscle just brought to the table in this way, you know, which is perfectly fine. If you want to be a bit fancier, you open them. Watch out, this is very hot. And we can, for example, put them here if you have the, the half open muscle here that I have. So, and you can open them this way, put the juice on top of it. Ooh, those are hot. Put the juice on top of it in a bigger plate than that, the juice, the onion, and serve them on the half shell. And that's very good too. Another thing that you do, you do five or six open oyster, uh, mussel per person with a little bit of butter, herbs, a bit of breadcrumb, put them under the broiler, it's like escargot, you know, type of thing. Other first course, it goes very well too. But really the classic way is to serve them, you serve them in bistro, directly like that, a big bowl of it. And uh, although it's not common in France, it's more common like in Belgium. In Belgium, this is going to be served with French fries. French fry and mussel, you know, which goes so well together. So this is the classic dish and one way of eating it very often is to, with your finger like that sometime, and some of the time you take an empty shell like this, add a pincher, you know, to go in the center of the other one and grab it this way to eat it instead of using it uh, with a fork, you know. So the classic way that you will find in the, in the real French bistro are going to be the moule marinière, just like this. And to continue our fish from the sea, we're going to do a new fish now, a very interesting fish, 
very ugly fish too that people use a lot now, the monkfish. As you can see, it has an enormous mouth and a very small portion of the tail. You know, just that small portion is eatable. This one, as you can see, I have the tail here. It's from a larger fish. Three quarters of the weight is there. Those are called monkfish or anglerfish or frogfish or lot. In France, it's lot. I've already started taking that thick skin out of this, which you want to remove. You know, and that skin is like leather. And often, you know, in that form here, cut the tail here. We do a type of gigot in France, you know, like a, a leg of lamb. We stud that with garlic and you roast it in the oven. There is another uh, black uh, type of skin on top, you know, a bit tough. You try to clean it up as much as you want. And in the center of that, you have that bone. You see, there is no, no bone in those two fillets. So it's solid meat, very firm. Some find it's akin to lobster, you know? And uh, some people have been known to use that instead of lobster. I mean, it doesn't really have the same taste, frankly. But it does, it can withstand long cooking uh, as in a stew, you know? It doesn't fall down, break apart like most fish do. So you see, I have the two fillet here, and in the middle, that very tough bone, cartilaginous bone, that's it. There is no other little bone in between. So it's an easy fish very safe for children to have. Huh? What we want to do here is actually butterfly it, as I'm doing here, because we want to do a roulade, what we call a roulade, that is um, a type of roll, you know, stuff it inside. So those fillets are relatively a bit small, often I use bigger fillet than that, but you see the inside is quite white. That's what I want. And uh, again, cut this one. Here, remember that you have to adjust according to your market. If the fillet is smaller, you do this. If the fillet is bigger, you only use one fillet and butterfly a large one. To a certain extent, what you want is a large square like that, that you can eventually stuff, you know, which is what I have here. Uh, this is barely a pound, and I would like it to be slightly bigger than that, but I'm going to stuff it. And first, uh, I wanted to, uh, uh, tell you about that cauliflower, which as you can see is quite firm here. We cut that cauliflower and actually even that part can be used for soup, but otherwise we use the flour right here. See what you want to look at something very firm, very tight like this. We cut that in two, you see, and those flour it, I put some over there to steam, directly steaming them and that's one of my favorite vegetables. I think it's Mark Twain who say that uh, a cauliflower is a cabbage with an education, you know? And uh, it is something, I think it's a funny, but quite to the point. Uh, in any case here, I'm going to put a little bit of olive oil in there and start the stuffing for, for our fish. And the stuffing is going to be done with garlic, which I have here, and diced mushroom. So I put the garlic here so it takes a little bit, the diced mushroom. You can, of course, change your stuffing here. What we're going to do is basically a vegetable stuffing. And inside this, another type of cruciferous vegetable, again, part of the cabbage family, we call that broccoli di rape. It's a bitter broccoli. You can see the inside, there is a little bit of a broccoli time. We call it broccoli di rape, or rape, or rapini. Uh, in Italian restaurant, it's part, as I say, of the mustard and the cabbage family. And it's kind of bitter and uh, very a la mode now and quite good. As you see, the outside is kind of fibrous and I'm pulling out those pieces which are a bit tough from the outside so that now the stem is tender, you see? Then you cut it into pieces. We have it at home very often. It's classic to have that with sausage, hot sausage, and it's very good. So this will be a different type of stuffing. We add it to our mushroom now. It's sizzling nicely. We'll have more than enough here. A little bit of salt and pepper. And this now has to, to cook. To cook for a little while, of course. I don't have time to let it cook and cool off. I have some which is cold here. And we're going to stuff our fish with it. So what I want to do, the white part of the fish, which is inside the filet, I would rather have that on the outside. So put the nice part on the outside, maybe the square part here, this way, and we put our stuffing on top. If it's a whole filet, 
You know, if the fillet is whole, you may be able to roll it, but for me, I have two pieces here, and I say because it's a, it's a bit smaller than usual. So I have it this way. I'm going to put the other part on top here, trying to get it together as much as you can. Let me see this one here. That's it. Gather it together this way. And we're going to tie it up like a roll, you know. Go there with the kitchen string again. You want to go around, roll it here, attach it, and do that little loop here that we call a half hitch. Again, a technique that we use for poultry, for other things. Very good for your Christmas package. Again, it's barely just a little loop that you slide underneath and ease it into it, tighten it as many times as you want. Then we cut it this way. I have some extra one that I can serve. Gently roll it around, tighten it underneath, more or less in the same way. Roll it again so that you can be where we started here at both hands, attach it and now you have your little roll. So, this is ready to be sauté. Now, we're gonna put a little bit of olive oil in that one here, and this, put a dash of salt on it. What you want to do is to brown it on one side, a bit of salt, brown it on one side for a minute or two, and when it's brown after, you turn it on the other side and let it cook covered for about 10 minutes, which is what I have here, as you can see. So now I want to remove this. It's cooked to this. And we want to create a sauce in the dripping of the pan here. I'm deglazing that with a little bit of a very dry white wine, the very dry, actually dry and fruity white wine. This is a, a, a dry Vouvray, and the Vouvray, the Chenin Blanc type, tend to be sweet, but those are quite dry. So that would be good with it. You bring that to a boil, boil it a minute or so. Then we have fresh tomato in there. And with the fresh tomato, we're putting tarragon. Again, the tarragon, the wine, the fish, the tomato will create a nice sauce. And I can even have a couple of leaves like this that I break on top. Now, what I may want to do is to cut this now. You want to do it like a roast, you know, so you want to cut the string, don't forget the string. that we have here. It's holding together pretty well now. As you can see, the, the fish is going to firm up as it's cooked, you know. Here we are. All we have to do is to slice it and to serve it here. Have a beautiful slice of the monkfish can serve maybe a third piece. Whoop. Take a large knife for that, you know, the large knife will make it hold together better. Extra piece here on the side. A little piece for the cook. And now, you're ready to serve it with the red sauce that I have around, the red sauce and tarragon. It's going to go so well with it. And with that, I want to serve the cauliflowers that I have here, which has just been steaming, as you can see here, in that uh, colander type of things. All you want to do is to put it in there. Now it's barely just a bit firm, you know. A little piece of butter will go in it. Maybe a little dash of olive oil in there, salt, paper, and we can put some chives. One way of putting chive is also just cutting it into fairly coarse pieces like this. You know, a lot of chive, salt, and pepper. Then we want to toss it together gently. It's steaming, you know, it's just out of the steamer. For me, it is the best. 
just like that, put on the table. I could eat a whole cauliflower for my, myself on this. We want to put this in there and serve the cauliflowers with the monkfish here. And don't forget the chive on top of it here. Oh, that delightful accompaniment. We're finishing our menu with a cranberry souffle with a cranberry red wine sauce. Uh, a type of tart, sweet flavor, it's a beautiful color. Cranberry are very versatile, not only for sauces, as we do here, we're going to do it for a dessert. Of course, it's low fat, very, there is basically no cholesterol. And in addition to that, you can freeze your souffle instead of putting it in the refrigerator, in the, in the oven, or you can also refrigerate it. Those packages, you know, are available frozen or fresh, basically year-round, and you can use one or the other. It's perfectly fine. But what we want to do here is to do one of those uh, 10 to 12 ounce package here, and then we put a little bit of uh, apricot jam in there, this way. Directly in this, a bit of sugar. Remember, this is very, very tart, so about a third of a cup of sugar, and a bit of water, you know, to go with it. You want to bring that to a boil and cook it for about 20 minutes, let it cool off, which is what I have here. You know. So this is cold now. What I want to do is to take about three quarter of a cup. I have about one and three quarter cup here. Put it in there to do the sauce. We're doing a red wine, you know, a red wine uh, and, uh, and cranberry sauce. And I'm using like a barbaresca there, about half a cup of uh, wine, you know, to do a kind of pungent, flavorful type of sauce, you know. Whoop. And the sauce that I'm going to have here, I could strain it and I could use it unstrained. I think that I am in a, in a mood, in a country mood today to do it just this way unstrained and it's perfectly fine this way. That we're going to serve with our, uh, with our souffle later. And what we have to do now with the rest of it and egg white, we're going to beat some egg white. I have half a cup of egg white here, which is not quite half a cup of egg white actually, slightly more than a third, I have three egg white here. Uh, one cup of egg white is about six, seven egg white. So we'll start beating this. You know, I use a, a copper whisk, a copper bowl there with a whisk, but I mean, uh, an electric mixer would be perfectly fine. You want to lift it up, lift up your white, Small quantity, and with a whisk like this for me, especially a large whisk, which pick up the whole mixture in one stroke, I can big egg white in about a minute, you know. Here the or egg whites are almost ready now. If you get tired with one hand, change hand. And that basically, three egg white should give you approximately three cup, a good three cup of egg white. One cup per egg white, you know. And this is what I have now. Those hold a nice pick, as you can see, fairly elastic and nice, you know, which is what I want here. Now I'm going to put the rest of my berry in there. I could fold it gently or lightly mix it with the whisk. And now I'm ready to mold my souffle. I have four souffle here, and they are approximately, though they are like three quarters of a cup mold, you know. It's going to be more than enough for fill up the mold. If I don't put too much on the tray on the outside. Here we are. See the 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 berry, because they are cooked and fairly high in sugar now after they have cooked, can kind of stay in suspension, you know, in the center. And I have, you see, plenty to fill up that mold here. I can even use a little bit of the extra one to put on top if I need to. What you can do is uh, to 
you know, make it smooth like that with a spatula. The same thing with the other one, you know. I have some extra one here. The four of them, you can leave them rough also. You want, with your thumb, to clean up a bit of the edge so they start straight, you know, in the oven. Same thing here. And you can, if you want also, I have a little bit extra, do a little dome on top like this. Give them a bit of a decoration when you cook them. And at that point, the important part of that, you can take the souffle and put them in the oven, or you can take them, put them in the freezer. In the oven, about 12, 12, 14 minutes at the most, 375 degrees fresh, frozen, about 18 minutes directly from the freezer into the oven. And now it's time to cook our souffle. Remember, you can put them in the oven, you can also put them in the freezer or the refrigerator. That type of souffle. For there, about 375 degrees, 10-12 minutes. I have some here which came directly from the refrigerator that we put and they are just about right. Those are about 15 minutes. So the conventional way of serving a souffle, I could serve it, watch out, it's very hot, directly on the little tray like this with a bit of uh, powdered sugar on top. Remember that we have a nice sauce to go with it. You know, you could even take a piece of the souffle. It's done like that. Usually the maitre d' does that in the dining room, taking the cap of the souffle you know, and putting some of the sauce inside and putting the cup back on top of it. But we have another way of uh, serving it here. We're going to put the sauce directly on the plate, spread it out a little bit. Then we powder one of the souffle. This one looks good. I'm going to powder this one and trying to get it directly out, you know, lift it up from the thing and put it directly on the sauce to serve it like that. It's easier for your guests to serve it this way. And remember that here, the souffle, you wait for the souffle, the souffle doesn't wait for you. So we start with our mussel, marinier, you know, real bistro type of food. Then we have that roulade of monkfish, stuffed with that bitter broccoli. It's going to go very well with the cauliflowers, with chive that we have after. A nice salad and of course your souffle of cranberry, which would be terrific for Thanksgiving, with the red wine sauce. It's great and for that we have a special wine today. We have a Louisval, it's 100% Chardonnay. Those wines are from South Africa, new coming on the market here, kind of fruity, delicious quite inexpensive, a perfect accompaniment for our meal today. I want to thank you for watching today's Gourmet. Until next time, happy cooking! <laughs>